the Tarakan, India. High atop the Himalayan mountains sits a small body of water called Rubicund Lake. For most of the year, the lake's waters are frozen. But during the summer months, as the snow and ice slowly melt away, a bizarre spectacle is revealed. Rupkund Lake is a place high up in the Himalayan mountains in the northern part of India. Uh, it's close to the second highest mountain uh, in India, and it is mostly unremarkable, other than the fact that we have thousands of human bones scattered around the shores of this lake. And that really is something which is exceptional. Now, these bones have been known about for a very long time. The site is visited by locals and by tourists and backpackers who have interacted with the bones. As people have come by, people have picked the bones up, they've stacked them into piles, and in many cases, walked off with them. So this location is an interesting example of how humans interact with bones. There are still a lot of unanswered questions did all those individuals die there or were they taken there from somewhere else? Is it possible that in the past there were ceremonies about disposing of bodies in this location that have been lost to time? We know that we have the remains from something like 600 to 800 human individuals. These bones are from adults. Um, for many years, there was a common assumption that all of these individuals had all died as a result of one catastrophic event. Most mass graves that we see around the world are the results of one event. A mass slaughter, a mass catastrophe. In the case of Rubicon Lake, you see something different. Looking at the bones, people have been able to figure out that there are several different population groups that are located in this lake, separated by hundreds, possibly even a thousand years. So it clearly was not one event. Clearly there was a series of events around this lake that led to people being here. Experts have had trouble explaining why so many groups of people journeyed to this lake at different times over the course of centuries and died. It's a fascinating story. And recently the collection of bones has become even more mysterious. In 2019, Scientists from Harvard University conducted a DNA study and found that some of the people who died at this lake came from far away, very far away. Most people are from South Asia, but one significant population group seems to have been from Greece, specifically from the island of Crete. So one big question is, what was a bunch of people from the island of Crete doing up in northern India, even to begin with? Let alone, how were they uh, ended up at the bottom of Rup Khan Lake? The only thing which really makes any kind of sense is the idea that they were on a pilgrimage through the mountains. Now, this is documented um, and known in recent times. There is a pilgrimage which is made by people following the Hindu faith who will travel through these mountains. Is it possible the bones in Rubkin Lake are the remains of unlucky travelers on pilgrimage through the Himalayas? And if so, what caused their demise? Some experts believe a clue may be found in a local legend involving a Hindu goddess named Nanda Devi. Nanda Devi is a mountain goddess that oversees the second tallest mountain in India. There are shrines built to her throughout the mountain. So there's this legend of a king and queen and uh, their many attendants making their way up the mountain to one of these shrines. They were being boisterous and festive as they approached the shrine. And Nanda Devi was insulted by that. She felt that they weren't respectful enough of this sacred space. So out of anger, she called on these iron balls to rain from the sky onto the king and queen and their entire party. Now, this is believed to be the explanation for at least some of the human remains that were found at the bottom of this lake on the mountain. Many of them died 
from blunt force trauma to the skull. This is an area without a lot of tree cover, without a lot of shelter, but it's also an area that is known for intense hailstorms. Hailstorms with hail as big as your fist. And you can imagine if you're out in a caravan of pilgrimage and all of a sudden this massive hail comes down in this area that could take out people regularly over a thousand years time period. It's plausible. But what's also clear is that when people started seeing all these skeletons together, all sorts of stories were developed as to who these people were and why they were. And I think this reminds us that if people see something anomalous, you, you seek an explanation. But if you see a whole bunch of skeletons in one place, people are going to try to explain it. Whether or not the people who traveled to Skeletons Lake were the victims of an angry goddess or just freak hailstorms, perhaps the real lesson of Skeletons Lake is that our bones tell stories even after we're dead.